There's actually quite a few wild feral horses in the state of Montana, but a lot of things I didn't know, and one of them was that they're all named. So let's go talk to someone who knows a little bit more about this and see what the story is about being named, and then we'll go find some out on the prairie and see if we can figure out their names from what she gives me. I'm over here at the Prior Mountain Horse, uh, well, the Prior Mountain Wild Mustang Center. And I think uh, there's a gal in here that was willing to talk to me, so we'll ask her a few questions because she was telling me a few things that I just flat didn't know. So this is cool. And by the way, this is in Lovell, Wyoming. And what was your name? Katie. Katie? Yes. And uh, I was asking Katie about uh, the management of the wild horses, like who's responsible for that and everything. It's the BLM, yep. correct? Yep. First, how large is it? It's about 40,000 acres. 40,000 acres. Yep. And it's all fenced? Yep, except for the canyon section, that's sort of self-fenced, you know, because I can't, if you've been out there. That's pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they would that, be able it's to a, go to that. It's a major canyon, I'll show it to you. <laughs> it's the third largest canyon in the United States, actually. Yeah, I was, um, see, I, I lived in Montana <laughs> all my life, and when I saw it, I was like, this is in Montana, this doesn't look like Montana at all. Yeah. But the the interesting part is, is you have all these horses documented, like, yep, by names. name and what they are, as far as... Yep, their lineage, their coloring. Lineage meaning, things. oh, mother and father? Yep. How, how would you know that? Um, just through observation mostly. So we've got records going back to the late 1950s, as far back as that. But uh, so we just track them. The, the stallion is obviously harder to, you know, figure out who the dad actually is. But the mom is obvious. Mom's pretty obvious. Yeah. yeah. And we watch the herds enough, the bands enough to know pretty much who they were with at. Who's in charge of the herd. Yeah. yeah. So you just miss a few then, just the ones that sneak in there occasionally. Or do yeah. they do that like elk? Because elk will have a herd, and then some little bull will sneak in and breed a couple of It's not cows. super common. It's not impossible. You know, there's some even that have been born this year that we're not sure who Messiah is. But yeah. most of the time we know. So this is pretty intensely managed day. Yep. I mean, it's, and one thing I, I've been telling people on my videos about, like, all kinds of because some people think we should just turn wild horses on everything right but they are hindered greatly by fences unlike deer and elk and other you can't just turn them out and right yeah they wouldn't be able to get very far and like you said they are fenced in so right. they can't get out of their existing range whereas whereas wild animals like elk and deer even moose can jump a fence pretty easily so it's it, fences really aren't a hindrance so there's a lot of other issues that wild horses would create. We just ran them everywhere. But that's one thing that's, I would say, unique. Buffalo are a little different because they, they can clear a fence, but they don't often clear it. So right. it's fences still are a hindrance because they'll just take out somebody's fence for yeah. like every time they go through it. So yeah. it's, it's a totally different deal. But yeah. horses won't do that. They're very, very light skinned. Horses are light skinned. So when they go through a fence, it would tear them apart. So... Yeah, so the stallions in these bunches, horses operate in a bunch. So like a, a stallion that's strong enough to sustain or gather his herd of mares, right? We'll have a, a band of mares yep. and he'll breed those. Yep. And will he keep that band all year? Uh, he'll try to and he'll try to add horses to it if he can. Um, but they do fight a lot. You know, they have to fight for their band. So there's always a, a bachelor stallion coming in trying to steal steel mares and babies yeah, it doesn't even matter if they're in a herd of wild horses or not just the herd the horde the herd of horses in my backyard fight like crazy yeah. so it's it's a natural thing yep they're always trying to compete with each other for those mares right yep so and then you have a this this is how much these are i don't know observed yeah, or exactly. cataloged and documented that would be the term is that this Right here is a 2023, so 10th anniversary of, that means they've been putting this out for 10 years or? Yep. And then you said, when was this started? Um, well, the horse range was established in 1968 and this building has been here since 2007, but as an organization in various forms, we've been here since the sixties. And organization meaning, which organization are we talking about? The one currently is the Prior Mountain Wild Mustang Center. It's existed in various forms, the Prior Mountain Wild Mustang Association you know names like that but it, basically the same and it's separate from the blm yep. so it's it's its, it's own organization. own organization yep 
and what do they do? So we advocate for um, ethical treatment and appropriate management of the horses, even though they're federally protected, you know, sometimes um, we try to offer guidance as to how to best manage them to, you know, preserve the herd for generations to come. And then a huge piece of it obviously is education with our building here with people coming in, asking about where they can find them, wanting to know, just like you wanted to know, you know, some information about them. Uh, so education is a huge arm, but. So what do you, what do you view as good management practices? Cause we're talking about population growth, right? Yeah. This is a 40,000 acre piece of property or, or pieces of property that are, so it's a defined area. So you're a finite amount of resources in that area, just like anywhere else yeah. with any other animal. So yeah. you have to regulate the population to keep them at a sustainable rate or they just eat themselves out of house and home and they would all die. So yeah. that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it depends on the herd. Our herd in particular, because we have such good records, we can have a, a specialized management program for them. Um, we can help the BLM decide, you know, which horses should stay and which ones should go if they do happen to have to take horses off. Um, we keep, you know, just records on anything that goes on up there. We know who's having babies when they're having them, how many they have, uh, just all sorts of data like that. So making sure that we try to keep the herd alive for as long as possible. They're a small herd, so the genetic diversity is always a concern. Um, making sure that, you know, lines are preserved throughout time. Genetic diversity, she's meaning like you don't event. It doesn't take very many generations in a small area that you have the father then starting to breed granddaughters and grandsons breeding. And, and pretty soon you just get uh, genetics that's, let's just say, not the greatest genetics. So they're talking about, do you, how do you do this? Do you bring in other other no. horses so they don't naturally want to breed like with their offspring so they try not to but the thing um it's not entirely unheard of but the big thing would be making sure that lines are preserved so if you're taking off all of a mare's offspring and her line doesn't continue then you're decreasing that genetic diversity just by management decisions um so then the pool is smaller to choose from if you will so then they just become <laughs> and how, so how many obviously you, you have them all in here so how many is there exactly there's about 200 oh 200 so i was under i i guessed 180. historically so. it's been about 150 there's about 200 now i mean it's always changing a little bit you know um especially after winter but so would you have some winter kill we did have several that uh disappeared over the winter we've had several babies disappear this year so far it was a really, really, so the, the last two years have been very difficult as far as everybody's concerned. Anybody that works with anything that eats grass, because grass has been hard to come by the last two years. So I'm sure that affected this herd of horses, right? I mean, because when you, when you don't have anything to eat and then you hit a winter, that was, there was pretty good winter. That's hard on things. Right, right. Well, this year... This spring in particular has been better than typical. Very good. You know, because we've had so much mm -hmm. moisture. Um, but yeah, going into winter, you know, 2021 and even 2022 were pretty much drought years. So yeah, it's definitely tougher to make it through the winter. And as they get, I mean, we didn't lose very many young horses. So it wasn't unexpected. You know, the older ones. You lose the older ones. Yep. So, so you're seeing about 200. Where's the, where's the, num where's the number of these things? You have or to count. This doesn't. So, so they have a the, why do they have a number? What's that's that? That's the page number. Oh, it's the page number on. so you can yeah. find them. Okay. Yeah, because it's organized by color um, in the book. So if, and, if you're looking for specific Oh, horses, I like see. And are these branded? Nope, they're not branded on the range, but they are obviously once they're rounded up, they brand them. And then they, did they go back out on the range? No, nope. nope, they adopt them out. So once they're off, they, they never go back on. So the brand is actually when they're leaving the range, yep. not when they're on the range. Yep. Yep. Okay, but they are rounded up periodically, correct? Periodically, yep. How often is periodically? Uh, totally depends on the range here. We haven't had one since 2015. Um, they just, they're going through their government process of planning one. They want to do it next year. So I heard that, yeah. Yep, they're in the works for that, but hasn't been one in eight years. Which is, is that why the population is up? Yep. Um, they also do fertility control here um, on the mares. So when it's implemented, you know, when it, works as it should or you know it works really well 
then they can keep the population from growing that way. But so you're talking fertile uh, using like darts. Yep. Yep. And do individuals do that? Yep. Do you, do you pay people to do that? The or BLM does it. The BLM workers do it. Yeah, the BLM workers do it. They have some park service employees who are certified to do it. Um, some herd management areas have volunteer darters. Uh, this one doesn't so much in the past anyway. Okay. I've, I've heard that the, the whatever they dart them with, what do we, is it PZP. fertility yeah. um, thing? It's about 70% effective. And, and it's only, you're shooting well, mares, correct? I yeah, mean, it's not. Only mares. If they do it well, that's one of the things as well as a lot of herds aren't so well documented. So it's harder to track which mares you've, you've treated. Here, it's super simple. We have great records on it. Um, it I think it's something like 95% effective when it's, done you know perfectly and Nothing's and perfect. so where do you shoot the horse with the in the butt in the hip yeah I'm trying to hit it in the hip yep how do you get close enough to shoot it with a dart darts are not really a long range weapon so um they start as close as they can the rule is like you know move back when you have to but start as close as you can so they they use a variety of dart guns um and they just, I mean, you have to be patient, but these horses are pretty acclimated to people. They're not like a lot of wild horses where you're crawling on your belly over a ridge to try to see them. Um, so you can get pretty close. Oh, okay. Um, but they okay. do get used to it and they start to figure out who's darting them. Oh, so I'm they sure. they have to start stepping back. You know, not that dumb. Horses are like, cows, you can like drop a gate in a field that <laughs> the gate's been closed for a long time and they don't even see it for a day. And a horse, did they like cross the field? You're like, what is he doing over there? Is he dropping that gate? Oh, oh, I think he left the gate down. Yeah. So they, they, are, they pay attention to these things very, very closely. Yep. So do you know the age ranges and everything? Their ages are all in here? Yep, ages are all in there. I mean, there's obviously babies from this year, not in this book, but babies from last sure. year in this book, um, up to, I think, probably 27, maybe 28 would be the oldest one. So how much do you deal with ranchers versus... Absolutely none here. So it's one of only four designated wild horse ranges, which means there's no livestock grazing allotments whatsoever on the Prior Mountain Wild Horse Range. I don't think it's commonly understood. It seems like there's an unlimited amount of grass out in the West or right. land, right. right? But when you live out here, you understand it isn't that way. You can't have unlimited buffalo, you can't have unlimited cows or horses or anything. Right. You have to manage like what how do you utilize your land? Right. What is your what is the, your organization's thought process on that? Are we like above below objectives, or, or is there like a target number? Do they? Well, the BLM sets for each herd what's called an appropriate management level or AML uh, for every single herd. They're all different numbers based on you know range and health calculations, a whole big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the AML for this herd is 108 to 128. So by BLM standards anyway, we're way over, which is the whole reason for the gather plan. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a different opinion on, you know. No way. What Everybody's got a different opinion. What the yeah. I, be well, here. I mean, it, it, the national parks have a different opinion about their stocking rates of the, yeah. usually ranchers have a different opinion on their stocking rates on, everybody has a different opinion on that. So it's just kind of, resource wise if you're eating the grass down over and over again yeah and it's not coming back more consumers less product yeah. right and so it can become an issue that you yeah. guys have to deal with is that you at all this or is that all blm's responsibility that's all blm's responsibility um yeah i mean they just they do everything for the herd really other than, i mean they use our data that we share with them and we're happy to do so we have a uh, what do they call it? An MOU, a memorandum of understanding with the BLM. So we have, you know, communication and yep, that's good. Yep, that's good. And then, so the one huge thing I hear all the time is everybody's, you know, like, oh, they, there must be a documentary somewhere where, like, fifty horses died being chased by a helicopter. Right. And I don't, I've never seen it or even seen where it was, but everybody seems to mention that. It's like, well, they're so abusive to the horses when they run them in because they run them, in, they kill them all or something. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Right. I can see, you know, if you're trying to run something through that canyon, it doesn't matter what you're running through it. Right. I would not ride a horse at a run down that thing. Right. 
So uh, yes, there are certain areas where that's really difficult. What is that how they do it here? They have done helicopter uh, gathers in the past. They haven't done them. I don't want to give a date because I don't know exactly when it was, but here they typically do bait trap gathers. So they just set up fencing in an area, either around water or I think it's usually food, you know, and the horses become acclimated to coming in there and then they just close the gate. And it's way less stressful that way. I don't think anybody could argue that. You know, that's... I would say that's less stressful on the humans as well. <laughs> I have done, <laughs> I have run horses out of the mountains, yeah. not wild horses. My, you know, just regular run-of-the-mill old horses and they get wild when yeah. you try to run them out of a so trapping them with food is a much better option if you can get them even with cattle if you can get cattle in the corral by having them follow you right. much easier yeah. than driving them yeah. it doesn't work as well when there's green grass or something so you have to do it when there's less feed they correct? usually do it in the summer or fall i believe i haven't been around for one so i'm not oh you haven't been around for one okay I have not so i'm not an experienced person on that Front, but. Yeah. Well, I, so I'm I'm really surprised. I'm from the western part of Montana. I've been all the way across Montana down south, but I've never been in this area very much. Mm -hmm. And when I come to this area, it's extremely dry. Yeah, it sure can. So I, is this like is your rainfall way less, or is it is your soil bad? I mean, the red, <laughs> the, soil the red is terrible. And the average precipitation for level, I think, don't quote me on this either, but I'm pretty sure I'm right, is nine inches per year. Which is okay, so that's like... about the same as us. We really? just, yeah, and we we have mostly rock. Yeah. But this red, whatever red dirt that is, must not grow anything, right? Yeah. Well, there's a, a variety of soil types because there's just a lot of geological features around here, um, but a lot of the soil is very saline. And so it just, nothing grows in salty. Soil. Salty? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, Eastern Montana has some of that too, where the alkaline starts coming up yeah. to the surface. If you can get grass established, it takes, it's really hard to do. Yeah. But once you get it, man, you don't ever want to touch it because right. it'll die. I mean, yeah. it's, it's fragile. Some of these horses are then auctioned off after they're uh, taken out of the herd. Um, here, do you yeah. know where the auction is? It's at that Britain Springs facility that you drove past. Oh, it's up there at the Wild Horse Ranch, so. Just so you know, there's a thing that we've adopted out there. I, I did see it. Where are they at? Are they out there? No, they're out here. I'll take you out there if you want. Okay. Out, That'd be great. Have that have what? That Been we've adopted. adopted. You've adopted. Not me, but we. The group has adopted. Yep. Okay. Yep. So. There's actually four horses. One of them's a quarter horse, and he's there to show people the difference between a prior horse and a quarter horse because they look a little different. Um, and one of the Mustangs is tame, and she's broke as a riding horse. Uh, the other two didn't have much interest in humans. They were adopted when they were a little older, so that, that plays into that quite a bit. But. I don't know. I broke a horse one time that had never been touched, <laughs> and he was actually easier to train. It wasn't like he wanted to be your friend right. ever, That's... but he was pretty easy to train because he was responsive. He didn't want to be your friend. Yep. Sometimes the ones that want to be your friend think they should dominate you as exactly. well. Exactly. Yep. So, I had that experience training horses for sure. Yeah. So this one over here, he's the least friendly and not that he's mean. He's not mean at all. Right. He's just totally disinterested in people. His name is Styles. And he's he, not a young horse. He's 24. I was going to say. He's pretty darn old for a Mustang, mm -hmm. especially considering was adopted in like 2009 so he lived quite a long life on the range okay yeah. and it, it wild horses have a life expectancy in the wild of, of what here it, you know 20 would be old for the stallions we have I don't yeah think i would say that's 20 but that's, that's pretty old that's i mean that's where they, remarkable if they're actually lasting to be yep, they often do we've got i think four or five at least that are 16 i think there's four that are 17 this year wow um, but they seem to pass away around 20 most of the time which is pretty incredible the mares oftentimes live quite a bit longer sure because they're not they're, fighting each other all the time and, and, and especially trying to kill each other fertility control so they're not having babies every year oh i suppose so that really yeah. extends mm -hmm. their life expectancy yeah, so this is paquita she's the the friendly one um, and her mom this is her mom here, the back one? Yep, the back one. This is a, called a grula color. Yep. This is a buckskin here, so you yep. got the, the like an elk color with the black mane and tail, and then a grula is more of like a... Like a mouse color. Yeah, mouse color, or a... 
And a lot of them have, well, a lot of buckskins too have the stripe over their back. Yep. Stripe line down their back and then a yep. stripe over their withers, I guess that would be, if you can see that right there. Yeah, and the prior horses in their Spanish heritage, they have a lot of those primitive markings. So Paquita and Mercuria both have a lot of, like the leg bars. Can't see where we're standing yep. right now, but they got the leg bars and the dun stripe and the, <coughs> the shoulder, shoulder bar, stuff like that. And she's got shoes on. She does, yep. Does somebody ride her or something? Not so much anymore. She's actually, she's foundered twice. So oh, that's part okay. of the fun of Mustangs. Is their, their, uh, what's the word? Their, uh, metabolism is set up for a totally different. Yeah, they're not really you used know? to grain or anything like that. <laughs> or not, even nice hay. Or, yeah, or, or even I mean, like good, rich, there, rich. Right? Oh man, there's nothing to eat out there. So, I they're mean, it, the, well, the stuff crap. that they're, yeah, the stuff that they're eating doesn't have yeah. much nutritional value. So, yeah. So, oftentimes when they come into captivity, they actually really struggle with eating nice food because their bodies just aren't, they've evolved to not. Do they just try to eat and feed them old dry grass hay or? These guys get some grass and alfalfa. I've got a Mustang, not from here, but she just eats tepe and she does like yeah. on that. Just on anything, that. I mean, obviously not moldy or like cow hay, but like right. just, just grass hay is usually pretty good. Yeah. They're obviously not skinny. <laughs> no. And no. We, we own this whole pasture out here, so they do get to go out, but again, you gotta manage Yeah, them. that pasture right there would be really rich for these yes. horses too i can yep. imagine so yeah so they do get to go out but okay well i appreciate it i'm gonna run up there and see if i can see something before i gotta run to yes riverton so absolutely i appreciate it though yep so when i was up here at the prowl mountain wild horse range last time it was in i believe it was june and there was no grass anywhere i i think the last couple years it had been a real struggle for everybody ranchers and everything uh, because it was so dry in montana that nothing grew and then all the horses probably were down I, i'm guessing i'd have to ask that lady but i'm guessing they were all down here in the winter time eating all this stuff so i see this is like a this is a wild horse area here or feral horses now some people like to call them feral horses some people like to call them wild horses i can see the point because these horses are not originally wild they they came from domestic stock and now they're wild but uh this is a a catch pen here you can see there's a catch pen in here there's a set of corrals over there with the loading chute so now I was talking to that lady and she was saying that they usually try to catch the horses with um, by baiting them in. So what they would do is they'd probably open a gate somewhere like this. That's kind of in the middle. And they get them used to coming in for this hay or, or this water. They put feed in here somewhere. And then when they come in, you lock them. You lock them in here, which is a lot easier than trying to run them in somewhere. So here's, it's a spring. It doesn't look like any horses are using this, so. There's no tracks whatsoever. Which is interesting, because I just saw a horse right up there. There's a, there, there isn't a lot of grass. This, this country is unbelievably sparse as far as grass goes. It is definitely way more grass than there was in the spring this is remarkable recovery for this ground you can see a lot of it's i mean there's there is grasses in there which is absolutely incredible that they that they came back from nothing look at this i mean there's a lot of weeds in here fireweed and everything like that but there is actual grass, which is remarkable for me to see that. So, wild horse issue is, or the feral horse issue is just a, it's a, such a controversial issue. But I will say again, my opinion is we, it's not a bad thing to have these wild horse areas, but we definitely need to make sure that we can, we can manage them for numbers. and. 
nobody really wants to talk about like how you're gonna manage them so there's see there's a horse over there so you can see the the black horse right here i'm assuming that's a wild horse I, it is so weird for me to see wild horses because they look like horses Interesting to me, when I got back home, I looked through their guide, and I was able to find this horse in there. Uh, his name is Tawa, and he's right here. This is a four-year-old stallion. Um, th and I can tell because of the white mark on his forehead here, that you can see in this photo, and then he's two white back socks. Um, and the, the, where, they, where those back socks come up to. So I was able to identify this horse from their book. Okay, I spotted some, a couple more. They're definitely kind of just standing on the side of a, of a canyon wall over here. I'll get up on this little hillside and I'll show them to you. <clears throat> yeah, I, it, when I come in here in June, I was thinking, man, these horses have got to be starving to death right and left. but. This year has been, this 2023, now all of a sudden it's been so many, there's been so much rain this year that they are now very, I mean, they've been very well off and there's a lot of grass that grew here. It's just remarkable how much grass grew back. No wonder it takes 40,000 acres to supply enough room for like a hundred horses is all because this is like barren 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 landscape here. <laughs> it is really barren look at this it's just like another world here so those horses are right out right out there i'll show them to you Young horse there. Now this is these look typical of wild horses to me. They're they got kind of a little bit bigger feet, um, and then not very deep in the body. They're pretty shallow in the body. There's one or two, one or three of them there or something. Probably right at the water tank down there. Yeah, I think you're walking down to the water. Wild horses don't wear shoes, obviously, because they're just out here doing their thing. So for them to be able to last on this, this type of ground, you see this is just rock right here, just rock. I mean, that takes, that, that, like a normal horse, like a my horse, if you rode him on something like this ground for, four miles you'd be lame he'd be lame he might not even make it that far so these wild horses are way tougher as far as what they can handle and uh is for and they're on their feet you can see this trail right here this is a horse trail now supposedly there's bighorn sheep in here as well i've never seen one but Supposedly there is. There's some horse crap right there. You can see where there is grass. It's just this really low grass. Now this, this is the same grass. I was just talking about this same grass. I need to find out what kind it is. That we have all back home on my dad's place. It, it doesn't grow very tall, but it does. It makes things fat. They, I'm not sure they really like to eat it. I'm not sure horses and cattle really like it, but it must have enough nutrients in it because our cows and horses get fat on that stuff. So that's a really hardy grass. That's usually the last grass uh, to survive in really harsh grazing areas. Typically, you'll see that grass where there's been, um, you know, some a lot of overgrazing, like where in my area. At least I'm. I'm convinced that's where a lot of old-time cattle people used to 
graze their cattle in the winter on my dad's property and so it, it they kind of killed off most of the other grasses except for that and that just seems to be extremely hardy stuff again it's weird it's just like horses it's like i take it, it's to me it's almost like i'm taking horse pictures of horses that are in my backyard i'm not really sure <laughs> it just feels odd but let's go do it anyway I'm gonna fall this old two track down see if i can look down where them horses are drinking there you can see the horse tracks on this trail horses have been using this this part for sure so we're in the right area So Katie had told me that where I was going, I would probably see one of these two bands, either Hickok's band, Hickok would be the stallion, or Quasar, which is a different stallion, and his band. But this Grula mare and this dark colt did not match what was supposed to be in Quasar's band or Hickok's band. Water trough must be right below me. And they're headed to the water. Hopefully they're not coming straight up here. The stallions of these herds can get awful cranky. Now that I'm back home looking at this, this is has to be Pax's band because there's a black mare, a dark brown mare, a colt, so that, that horse that I'm thinking is young, he is about two now, and then Amatilla, which is a grula mare with a large star, and that is Pax's brand. So this has to be the stallion Pax. So apparently during this last winter, Amatilla lost her baby somewhere. Uh, and then she's running with Pax's band where it says the year before she wasn't. She was kind of jumping around between bands. He, he's a yearling, I think. Okay, well, I gotta get going because I gotta go down to Riverton, Wyoming and judge this be a judge at a beef contest this little band so the stallions from what i have read in louis lamore books the stallions all hang individually and then they try to 
put together a band of mares. This one has a small band of mares, so if you're tough enough and mean enough, you can keep a band. But other stallions will kind of wait out their time, and if they feel like they're strong enough, they'll make a go at it. And they'll try to beat up this stallion right here. Because if they can beat him up, they can force his mares to go with them. And then they'll keep that band until somebody stronger comes along and and beats them up. So that's kind of the process of the of the herds of, of wild horses in general. A good cowboy book to read is Will James, his story. And and uh, he was quite a cowboy, but he actually went out and uh, rent caught wild horses and traps and and by running them in. And one of them actually a stallion flipped around in a pen and kicked his teeth out. And he had lots of headaches and problems with his teeth and everything for what quite a while after that until he so he actually went to Hollywood for a little while and got a, jo a job as a cowboy extra for Western movies so that he could get his teeth fixed. And once he got all of his teeth fixed, he came back out west again. It's a good book. You should read that. No, it's a good read. Now here's some more of that hardy grass. You can tell it's all been grazed down. Some areas it's growing, they haven't grazed it yet. Been grazing it some. So. Alright. So if you want more information on wild horses or something to do if you have your opinions, make sure you leave them down below. Or if you want to come up here and see me ride with them again, I'm going to talk to some of the people involved. And uh, see if I can come up here and camp for the night with Calabar. And we'll ride around and see the wild horses that are up on top. Because there's, obviously if there's 200 head in here, we haven't seen even close to that. Until next time, God bless.